I love the man once who cut shapes into skin because his words didn't work. And the worst thing was I worked with words and so when I spoke he looked at me like I'd hurt a part of him I'd never hurt. I never saw him do it, his work. But I saw the blood, I wiped it, dried like a dye poisoned lake from the leather of a jacket. I scrubbed silver Prada trainers doused in DNA with a bleach dipped toothbrush that he had hardly used. My name's Sabrina Mathews. I'm a poet, playwright, I perform my own work and um, I'm a poet in residence for Cape Farewell, which is a climate change and arts organisation supported by the Science Museum. I'm a global shaper for the World Economic Forum and I am currently a writer for Liberty, which is a civil rights UK charity. I grew up in South London and um, my dad's Egyptian so I lived there for a little while as well and recently found out that my great granddad was a poet in Cairo so poetry ran in the family. If I'd actually seen him do it then maybe I would have left unable to handle the careless mess, the face like a smashed birthday cake on the pavement to be swept up with the mist and the veins of piss in the morning by a man who'd never told an English person his name but then again maybe I wouldn't. Um, I think I'm a poet because I don't really like saying things in, in normal language because I find it really hard to articulate what I want to say. And so um, in the form of poetry, everything just seems to come out much easier. So when one night he asked me, babes, can you put this in your shoe for me? Yeah. I said, yeah, of course, minor. And we drive away. And I try to make my mind as unsee-through as the tinted windows on the rented car that costs more than his flat but it was part of all that and he had to have it. Just like I had to have him. I went to King's College University in London um, to study classics and English literature. Um, and then I did a master's in international politics and diplomacy. I funded that through waitressing at nightclubs and strip clubs. Strip clubs at that time were part of this empowerment myth, I think, of um, women finding an empowerment that they weren't finding elsewhere. So I started writing poetry about that world, about those people. It's usually quite dark and surreal and weird. I had a dream last night, because I didn't go to sleep till six. I had five guys last night in it. One of them skanks me, three fake tens, same serial numbers in all of them, trampy chief. In this dream, I could look better, be better, act better, smell better, make better money, buy better things, be better at being better. But better know, it was just a dream. Fine is a poem that was written um, in response to a number of workshops that I did working with women who work in on-street prostitution in Lambeth. Trust me, yeah. When I'm on one, I'm on. Even when I'm on, I'll be bleeding and I'll just rip out that tampon like, and what? I want your money, bruv. Come on, let's go. If you're operating in life as someone who is very much on the bottom of the ladder, the choices that you're making are, are not free. I believe that a woman working on the street would have been herself doing something else if she had been born into a system where the breath required to speak her name didn't have to be taken from a darker part of the lungs. The Sky Scholarship has allowed me to concentrate on poetry. It's very difficult to get paid um, enough money to live off poetry. It is possible, but it's difficult. Um, so I usually have to concentrate on theatre work, which is great, but um, this has allowed me to put a little bit more focus on the poetry. Down another hill, me belt's gone. Down another hill, so I pull it tight. It's gonna be another night of tummy tucked in, air sucked out. All these scallies talking about how they like them big. It's a myth put about by those who don't know now. Down another hole. I don't give a fuck if it ruins his eyes. Do the buttons all the way to me bum. You ain't getting away from me again now like that. Trying to make me look fat. Do you think I look fat, you fucking twat? Do you really think I look fat? The £30,000 that I've got from Sky has allowed me over the year to set up a production company, a poetry production company called Pop, um, that produces poetry in all different forms and um, runs events and things like that. 
and it has also allowed me to write a one woman poetry based show which will go to Edinburgh Festival this year and also I will have um, a collection of my plays and poetry published. No more page three. And it makes me so happy that finally, 84 years after winning the right to vote through protest and death, yes, papers might actually start to fill pages with the sagest or most outrageous words of powerful women, everyday women, whose faces don't need to be pleasing and stomachs don't need to be thin and boobs don't need to be bared. So a four-year-old son can see the family paper when painting at the dinner table and he doesn't grow up to think all girls are fair game. I think spoken words, the way that it's delivered, the way that it's written, it just, it has a pace to it and a, a musicality. And I think that allows the subject matter to delve into things which in straight writing might not seem as interesting, but the musicality and rhythm of spoken word allows that slightly heightened language to take you somewhere else. We wouldn't want to get our lips bust because we needed to be looked at like we were needed to be kissed and he needed me to feel like this so that I would need him, help him feel less empty. An emptiness that left him so full of soullessness that he took his own life every night because there's plenty of ways to die and still stay alive, babes. I get inspiration from conversations. So be very careful what you say around me. And um, just things that I read in the papers or campaigns that are going on, issues that I feel like haven't really been given as much attention as maybe they should have. On a day when you actually manage to not do emails, I could probably spend like six, seven hours just writing anything more than that and I think you'd fry your brain. I bent down to get the gun out, say I'm out, let's cut out, let's start a business, use our money, start a business. It can still be illegal, just not this. Not violence and conflict, unpicking a person's skin, their memories, their existence, their reason for being. But before I reach in, I see him. My eyes caught a mirror that showed me my life and it wasn't looking too nice. Because there he was, his hands on the face of a girl who faced the stairs she was going down. And as he turned around and saw me looking, his look looked deeper than if he just tried to deny he was inside her, even though his dick was still in it as he said it. The themes that I like to write about are things that affect people's lives who have been somewhat ignored or represented in a very particular way in the media. Um, that's what I'm interested in. Good women. You tell me I'm a good woman. And I think I've known many good women. They've sprung from mattresses when gravel has rained through the window and scratched the glass of the bedside clock. They've taken their clothes off in order to dress another's wound and haven't put them on again until it healed. They've swilled words in their mouths until tumours have triumphed and still, they never spat. They've cleaned the arms of old men who only ever washed them with belt buckles and whiskey breath. They've stolen days from the sky so that the ground can be stronger, hold our weight for longer. They've laid on paper in blue biro to make the bricks seem as kickable as the cotton wool she uses on her eyes. They've bled tequila on dance floors to move better to the sound of never being good enough because they never are good women. The amazing thing about performance poetry and spoken word at the moment is you can be in a tiny basement pub in East London um, and then you could be at the Royal Opera House or all the festivals now as well. They tend to have a poetry tent, a poetry programme from Glastonbury to Latitude to Best of All. So there's me, standing silent by the open door, wondering profoundly if this place, this space of flushes, blusher brushes, confessions of crushes, of bitching, rip dress stitching, nylon naked itching, of red stains, head pain, shouts of I can't fake it again, of lollipops, double drops, shouts of just make the spinning stop of truth, uncouthly, cubically coughed, is actually the place to be. Enjoy the rest of the night and um, I'll see you later. There's so many poets and spoken word artists who are kind of getting millions of views on YouTube and that's prompting music promoters to book them for things that otherwise they would have only considered for music acts and like 
Places like the South Bank Centre, which is the biggest arts organisation in Europe, have got an entire department dedicated to literature and spoken word, and their spoken word programme is um, just constantly growing. I put the gun on the desk behind the nightclub door where the woman on the till looked down at it soundlessly and then back to a magazine which was screaming about racist footballers who they'd still marry anyway because everyone says some things sometimes that they don't mean, don't they? I asked her for a pen. She handed me a black biro and smiled at that. I took it and I never handed it back. In the future, I hope to write some fiction. Um, there's two novels that I really want to write. And um, I feel like I've spent the last four years writing about the last 15 years of life. So it would be quite nice to do some exciting, adventurous stuff so that I have something to write about for the next 15 years. So, yeah, I think a lot of fun, really. That's what the future should hold.